Hello everyone! Last time we made our own layer on top of Unity's UI system. And many of you loved that and even suggested great improvements in the comments. Thank you for that. I'll go over some of them. I promised a part 2, so here it is. We are going to build the part that is responsible for the logic of displaying information. At the end of the video you will have one way to organize the flow of information and control how they are displayed. From last time we have all those ready to use UI elements. They can only configure themselves. There is no business logic. Now we need an easy way to work with them, make them display data and control their state. The most important rule is that we want to respect the single responsibility principle. I want to warn you again, UI takes much much more time than you think. At the end of this video, I will also give you my two cents on this matter. But first, let's dive into some design patterns. That's right, no freestyling here. In the world of user interfaces, there are three popular design patterns. MVC, MVP and MVVM. Let's go over each one. There's just a little bit of theory, don't worry. MVC stands for Model View Controller. It is what you are most probably used to. Your model holds the data, the view is your Unity UI, and the controller handles input, communicates to the model, and updates the view. Your controller is your mono behavior. This is just how every YouTube tutorial does it. Then there is MVP. The P stands for Presenter, obviously. It's very close to MVC. The difference here is that the view captures user inputs and sends it to the presenter, which takes the user input from the view, communicates to the model and updates the view. It, it's very similar, it's just in theory they are a bit different. And finally, the coolest one on the block is MVVM, which stands for Model, View, View Model. Don't look at me like that, I don't invent those names. Here the view is again dumb and contains no business logic whatsoever. Kind of what we have done so far. However, it takes the input from the user and delegates it to the view model. The view model handles the input, manipulates the data from the model and makes it fit into the view. Usually the connection between the view and the view model is done via data binding. What is also important in MVVM is that multiple views can talk to the same view model. So there is a one to many relationship. This is the one we are going to implement, or at least attempt to implement. You will see where the challenges are pretty soon and we should stay flexible. The key in MVVM is the observation part or the data binding part. Data binding is basically a synchronization of a property between two objects. Like you want to bind the user health points, which is a number, to the value on the UI slider. When the user health changes, the slider updates. Two-way data binding also exists. It means that if you change the slider, the user health points changes. <sighs> Unity does not really have native data binding. C Sharp does support reflection, which I would hate to use. It's not pretty. You're accessing properties by their string name and Unity does the reflection at runtime. It's terribly slow and dangerous. So let's go to the event-based route. It might not be strict 100% MVVM, but pretty close. Surprise, surprise, we will use the ultimate event system to handle the communication between the view and the view model, but also between the view model and the model. So the big work will be to create the view model classes because that's our bridge between our game world and our user interface. Let's implement a few elements to really understand it. I'll continue with the previous project. We did this simple user interface and build a few reusable UI elements like views, buttons or even headers. We have a theme but one comment from Jason proposed to have a theme manager used by all elements, which allows us to have a theme linked to one object only. This is a good suggestion. It makes managing themes much more easy. I will have a keep the theme slot on each element as an override, because let's say you would like to mix themes. For example, maybe for Christmas, you want to have a Christmas theme that's only applicable to certain elements. Well, you can then use that slot as an override. As this tutorial focuses on the logic part, I'll quickly skim over the UI update. So I made a very simple health UI showing the health points, a health bar using a slider, and we can control the health with two buttons, one to increase, one to decrease. I introduced a new element, which is a custom slider, which uses a slider SO to configure itself. Nothing too fancy. What I've added already is a public method to set the slider's value. This is important for later. If you liked the first video, this should be either easy 
or a good exercise. Create the scripts, create the data and hook it all up in the editor. It's pretty simple. On the text component, we have also added a new method to set the text. If you don't have it yet, you can download and import the event system on my website. The link is below. We need the game event and game event listener class. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I really recommend you to watch that video. All right, let's go closer to MVVM. I'll create three folders, views, models and view models. Everything I have so far, except the event system, belongs to the view. For the models, we won't create a full game, just dummy classes. So let's make two scripts, a health and a health controller. The health is a model which stores health information. It's a basic C-sharp class with a constructor where you pass a starting health. Then we make a few public methods to use this model in an easy way. I think this is all self-explanatory and yes, I do prefer to write getters and setters in this way. The health controller is a mono behavior which will have a starting health and use our health class. This class is not quite a model, but more like a view model or essentially a controller. This is more understandable than if I would call it health view model, honestly. The view model naming is great for UI, but not so for non-UI things. The important things here are the event related things. First, we have a game event that we will call whenever the health changed. Then we defined two methods where we can receive incoming events on health increase and on health decrease. Those methods take the amount that we hopefully will receive and update the model. In other words, this class is used to be told, hey, I want to change the health by this much. And this class then sends another event that says, hey everyone, the health has changed. Save and go back to Unity. I'll create an empty game object, call it health controller and put the health controller script on it with a starting health of 100. We need some events, so let's create a new folder for that and create a few events. The first event will be on health changed. We can drag and drop it on the health controller. Then we can add two game event listeners and we create two new events as well called on click increase health and on click decrease health. The health controller will listen to those events and call the appropriate method. This part is now ready. Now onto the view models. I'll create all the scripts already. A button view model, a text view model and a slider view model. As a reminder, those classes are the link between the view and the model, view models. The code is pretty boring. We need a reference to the view. For buttons, it's our custom button. We also set the data that is being sent, similar to what the animator events does. This is not ideal, but for this tutorial, it's okay. In a real game, this value would probably come from another model. We need an event that will be triggered when the view tells us that it has been clicked. And finally, we need to listen to the button itself to know when that button has been clicked. So the uppercase on click method is for the button and the lowercase on click event is for communicating to another component. The text view model is even more unimpressive. We just keep a reference and define an on health change method that will listen to an event and update the text on the view. Now, sorry for the bad naming here. I realized this very late. Probably Unity's drama confused me. The method on health change should actually be named on number changed, for example, because we take an int and convert it to a string and display it. This view model actually does not know what kind of data it is. It just knows how to convert it to give it to the view. Let's hook it up and see how it works already. Select the button and add a button view model. We drag and drop the button reference and we put an event and we can even give the value to be used. Let's do the same with the decrease button. Now the text will get a text view model which just needs a reference. And we can add one game event listener that listens to the own health changed event and calls the right method on the text view model. Save, run, and you should see the text update as you click buttons. I know all this work to update a label, but this is scalable for big games. All right, let's finish the slider. The code for the slider view model is simple as well. And here I name it correctly. When the value changes, we check its type and update the value on the slider. Easy peasy. In Unity, add the slider view model and set the reference, add a game event listener and set the event and the method. Done. Now, the slider and the text update based on this event dance. If you're still here, I applaud you. I'll be honest, I nearly canceled making this video for two reasons. One, 
building UI systems from scratch is a lot of work and I try to keep the level somewhere above beginner but not too far into intermediate. The thing is every game is different and you will gravitate towards certain patterns and scripting style based on your unique game. I don't think you will ever implement strict MVC or MVVM patterns. You can be close but there will be always some kind of compromise that you will uh, go for. Second reason is that maybe just maybe you should use or buy a UI framework if you intend to build a large UI. I'm talking about many screens, many modal views, lots of transitions and so on. Maybe something like Nova UI, Doozy or even ne Neosis, Noesis, Noesis GUI, whatever, might give you a better head start than building all of this from scratch. Like for my next mobile games, I'm seriously evaluating to use a framework. But in any case, if I'm building my own UI, it's gonna be event driven all day long, that's for sure. All right, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Now go work on your game. <sighs> Unity's UI system is really something. I mean, in some places, Unity says to not use their own components and that you are better off implementing it yourself if you need performance. It's pretty funny. Then Unity's new UI toolkit is also interesting, but feature-wise, it's not at the same level yet. So I don't find it super attractive. Maybe in six months, maybe in one year, but for now, I mean, it misses a few features too to really be at the same level than the standard system.